What is up everybody, Sven Diesel here with Sportsman's Warehouse. We're going to be tying up a hare's ear nymph. This is a very popular pattern. It's something that everyone should have in their box in a few different sizes and colors. I prefer to weight them with a tungsten bead as pictured here. So let's go ahead and run through the material list. First, we're going to start with a TMCO. Uh, this is a TMC2487 in a size 14. I'll tie these up in 14, 16s, and 18s. Uh, we're going to be using a, uh, a 2.4 millimeter tungsten bead from River Wilds Flight in the color gold. We're going to have some UTC. This is uh, 70 denier in black. And for the tail and the thorax, we're going to be using, this is a uh, ring neck pheasant skin in natural. We're going to be pulling a feather right here off uh, what would be the upper shoulder. Um, size it according to what you're going to be using, of course, but, uh, you know, we don't want to, uh, that will be plenty of feathers for this fly. And so for the for the body, we've, I've got a couple different colors here. This one here is a gray, and we also have it in natural. These are my two most popular colors that I love to have in my box, and I think it complements this pheasant skin very well. Um, you're also going to need to have some uh, wire. This is some UTC Brassi. If you're going to be doing uh, size 18s, I'd recommend a small and then something to just solidify the thorax, uh, give it a little shine and shimmer, and that's the Loon Thin Resin. So let's go ahead and get started. A little trick here to get the bead on is I'm going to orient my hook so the hook point is up in the vise, and I'll simply slide it. You can see there's a small side and a big side. I'm going to slide the small side over, and then I will basically take it out out of the the vise orient that bead up and over to the eye and then I'll place it back in the vise and I like to have this eye slightly down so that that bead stays forward I'll give it a little ping test to make sure that it's nice and secure and then we'll go ahead and start our thread right here behind the eye and I'm going to work my way down the shank uh, using that tag end to just kind of have touching wraps it's a good habit to get in I'll trim off this tag end and then here we're going to be grabbing uh, one of these feathers off this uh, pheasant skin and I'm going to basically take this and remove this fluff. I don't, I don't really want to use this. You can save it for some dubbing or uh, there's a lot of various uses for this. But I'm going to pull off about, um, I don't know, 8 to 10 fibers here. And I'm going to try to keep them as oriented as possible uh, so that the tips are aligned. But they don't necessarily have to be placed in a stacker. And you don't have to sit there and line them all up one by one. Um, I think that it provides a, a really unique uh, bugginess to it by having them uh, as tapered but uh, as close to off the stem as possible. So I'll go ahead and tie those in. We're working my way down the bend. Notice how I'm pulling those uh, fibers upwards and then that way they lay right there on the top of the shank and then I don't really want to include those uh, little butt ends of this uh, these these fibers of this pheasant and so I'll go ahead and just trim those out and then I'll clean those up and you notice the tail length is about roughly the hook gap um, roughly the size of the body of this fly which would be from where my thread is right now on the hook shank next I'm going to tie in this wire on the top of the shank I like to insert it into the bead just a little bit and then as I get halfway down I'm going to kind of pull it to the side this will help with your first initial wrap uh, when we're going to be ribbing this fly and then I will um, go ahead and grab my dubbing I'm going to pull out a hefty clump because usually I'm going to be tying these in sets of three or six and so you know if you have a little bit extra just apply it to the next fly and I'm going to pull off uh, less is more this is going to dub onto this thread very very nicely um, this is something that I really like about this uh, rabbit dubbing is you've got some of these uh, these hairs the the guard hairs but also it just really dubs on real nice you don't really need to use a wax or anything but you could you know maybe stick your finger in your ear I'm just kidding don't do that and we're going to go ahead and wrap this up and around and you want to build a little bit of a taper so here at the beginning uh, we're going to uh, be doing touching wraps and then I'll kind of overlap them don't be afraid to add a little bit more dubbing uh, don't don't do it too thin you want this to be a little bit of a you know a treat for the trout and so I'll apply a little bit more dubbing but we're, we're not going to dub all the way up to the bead we're going to end it um, with about a beads gap right there so you can see I could slide that bead back and it's about a double bead 
and then we're going to take this wire and come up and over. Notice how easy that was. Just make sure your tail fibers are not going to be skewed when you come over up and over with that first wrap. And then we'll get about uh, four or five segments in here. And, and that will be proportionate as well on the size 18s um, or even smaller uh, because you're going to be using a smaller wire. And so we'll go ahead and secure that off. Um, you can helicopter it off. I like to use these flush cutters and so I'll just cut that off and then... Um, we're going to be now uh, building up this uh, this thorax or wing case and uh, for that we're just going to prep this by evening those out and we're going to utilize the whole part of this feather and I'm just going to trim out this tip because I don't really want that stem uh, going up and over uh, for the wing case here and so I'll just trim that out uh, so it's not in our way and then I will judge it and this is a, a little bit too much of too many fibers here so I'm just going to take a few more off here um, you can just prep that by just pulling them back. You want about, uh, I don't know, um, 8 to 10 again on each side. Uh, that seems to be the common denominator for this. And then the trick to tying this in is I'm going to start it here on my side, and then I'll just let, let, let those fibers kind of spread out as I, as I wrap backwards, basically forming a, a black same spacing as our bead here. And then we're going to trim these, uh, these tips here as close as we can. Uh, you're not going to get it uh, you know, all the way down in, but we can just secure those down by wrapping them and kind of forcing them down into that gap there or into the bigger side of the bead. And now we're just going to dub this body, give it the, the legs, um, and this is going to be something that you're going to want to not twist as tight uh, as we did for the body. You're going to want to just uh, lightly dub this on, give it a few twists, maybe a third as many as we did for the body and you're going to want to apply a generous amount of dubbing here because we're going to brush it out and you can see you can go ahead and wrap back but this is uh, now double the size of the bead if you're thinking proportions and then we just simply fold this up and over and I, I like to spread them out and so you got to be a little bit careful when you're wrapping up and over you don't want to bunch them together into a clump and you can always use your thumb here on the top and kind of spread those fibers out and then I'll get a couple wraps in front to secure this and then we'll go ahead and trim this out if you got a little gap there that's okay um, oftentimes I'll add a little bit of tinsel or um, you know a little bit of flash here on the back but for this one we're just going to use the resin to create that shimmer effect and so we'll just build a little black collar not not something that's uh, predominant um, I haven't had luck using hot spots you know uh, so I like to use black thread for this or brown and then I'll go ahead and do a three uh, a three turn whip finish secure that um, with the so that I'm going to be trimming this off on the top that way when we resin it um, the resin will uh, basically finish the fly um, bonding that thread together to you know everything and so um, we're going to go ahead and just grab a little brush here and brush this out just right here to create those legs a, a little bugginess here as this thing is just drifting through the water column it's just going to look like a nice uh, trout treat and you can brush it uh, all you want but uh, that's about all you need right there and I got a, one little guard here here I'm just going to trim that out um, so that it's not uh, predominant and that looks pretty. I'm going to moisten my fingers just a little bit to get all those uh, fibers going down and then the last step here is I'm going to take a small little drop. You don't really want to go too big and I got a little hair there on the tip so I'm going to remove that hair. I don't want that going onto the fly but you just want a small, to maybe even half a drop and just apply it right there. Use the tip to kind of spread that around. You can see how that just really, really makes it really nice and that's going to bond the thread. Created a really durable fly and if you get a little bit on the bead, that's okay. You want it to just flow and if it's not even, you can always wipe a little bit off. Just don't smear it back onto the body of the fly and we'll go ahead and cure that up. And that, you can see it's a super easy, super quick tie. It's something you need to have in your box and all these materials are available at Sportsman's Warehouse. Uh, we'll include a list in the description. So make sure you tie some up, add them in a few different sizes and colors and uh, go out and fish them. Thanks for watching.